Here we go. I would. All right. So stoichiometry is simply the way that we go from amount of one substance to the amount of another substance. And what we've done so far has all been molar mass, mole ratio, or mole ratio, molar mass, or molar mass, mole ratio, molar mass. And we've used those two concepts. Um, you can use stoichiometry though to go between the amounts of anything if you can utilize your chapter 10 material. So for example, um, well, just a recap. If we think about our chapter 10, what do we know about the mole? One mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms or molecules or formula units. We also know that it is equal to 22.4 liters and we know about the grams. So we've been doing the gram portion with our molar mass. We've been utilizing that in our periodic table already. Oh, I did not mean to zoom in, but here we are. So. So let's do some thinking here. Let's, let, let's make a plan and see if we can solve. I'm gonna go back to my trusty equation of 4AL plus 3O2 yields 2AL2O3. Two two All right, let's say in this case, you've been given, um, Let's say we have been given 5.25 moles of aluminum oxide. And we're being asked to determine though, how many liters of oxygen gas we needed to make that. So this is not mole to mole, mole to mass. This is not a memorized pathway. This is where you're gonna have to step it up and think about dimensional analysis, which we've been doing for months now. And, and think about the relationships between the units that we know, okay? So let's make a plan here. We've got moles of aluminum oxide and I wanna have liters of oxygen. So clearly this is gonna be stoichiometry, right? So if it's definitely gonna be stoichiometry, that means I'm going to have to have a mole ratio. Um, so if I have moles of aluminum oxide, probably a good first step would be for me to take this and get from moles of aluminum oxide, use my mole ratio, and then I get to moles of oxygen. I don't want moles of oxygen, I want liters of oxygen. Can you convert between moles and liters? Yes, you can. And then we do our liters of oxygen. So, and I, you don't have to make a plan every time. I'm just doing it for us to kind of go through the thought process together. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and draw my fence because that has not changed at all. And I'm gonna put my given 5.25 moles of Al2O3. Draw. What has to be down here? Moles of Al2O3. Now, what we need to be thinking though is, all right, in my plan here, in my thought, I had moles of aluminum oxide. I know I have to use a mole ratio somewhere in this problem. Generally, if you start with moles, the next step is a mole ratio. Because if I have moles here and I have moles here, it just makes sense to go ahead and do the mole ratio part. So I'm gonna, mole ratio is always between my unknown compound uh, or my unknown and my given compound. And so oxygen. This is a mole ratio because it has two different compounds. That means the numbers come from a balanced chemical equation. There are two moles of aluminum oxide for every three moles of oxygen. If I were to stop right here, I would only have moles of oxygen. I don't want moles of oxygen. I want liters of oxygen. So I'm going to use dimensional analysis to convert between moles and liters. If I have moles here, I've got to have moles here. And then I'm trying to get to liters. So liters is going to be on the top. I have to make sure this is an equality. And what we should know is that 22.4 liters is equal to one mole. That's your chapter 10. Now moles of um, oxygen have canceled out. I can do the math and I have successfully 
converted to liters of oxygen. So 5.25 times 20.4. One hundred and seventy six liters. Yes. Yep. All right. So that's not something that I can give you a formula for. That's not something we can memorize. You can memorize going mole to mole. You can memorize mole to mass, mass to mole and mass to mass, but I mean, I guess you could, but some of them, okay. well, I, I prefer a process. I don't like to memorize formulas. I like a process that works. Uh -huh. But that's part of knowing the process. If you understand dimensional analysis, you know, this has to be the same as this. Do you know what I mean? And then you have to use some logic and what we know. Okay, you're going to have to use a mole ratio, right? So you've got to go from mass to moles and then mole ratio to get to moles of the other thing and then back to mass of the new thing. Okay. All right, so let's use this same equation. And let's try, you try one on your own. One thing that kind of makes people a little crazy sometimes is there's more than one correct way to get this answer. Sometimes we don't do it the same way and that's okay. As long as you get the, the right answer at the end. All right, so we're gonna use the same balanced equation. If you didn't write that down, um, you're gonna need to, I'll, I'll push it back up here in a minute. Let's say in this case, we have been given, ooh, let's challenge you. Um, 7.25 times 10 to the 31st atoms of aluminum. And our search is going to be for grams of oxygen. You have to use a mole ratio somewhere. It's up to you to determine where that is. Go smart kids, use your brains. Go, go, don't cry. Make a plan, see if it works. Oh, 
I'll take you back to the numbers. All right, I put my work on the board. Some of you may have just gotten this really large number on your calculator. I, I made that in scientific notation because I don't like that number. Yes. This is, I want mass, so I have to use molar mass. And there's two oxygens, one is 16, two is 32. How about it? I did it twice, so I think I did it right, but I may have done it wrong. Oh, well, now I get the big number. I don't know what uh, sometimes we hit a button twice. What's up? The this part. Here was my thought process. Okay, listen, and I and I'll go through how my brain worked through this. I have atoms, I'm trying to get to grams of something completely different. So I know I have to use the mole ratio. Since I have atoms, my first thought was, well, I better get to moles. Because I'm gonna have to use the mole ratio. So that means whatever my given is, I'm gonna need it in moles at some point. So here was my first step. I got went from atoms to moles. If I were to stop right here, I have moles of aluminum. I don't want moles of aluminum, I need oxygen. Well, the only way to go from one con compound to a different one is to use a mole ratio. So I used my mole ratio step here. Since moles of aluminum are here, I gotta have moles of aluminum here. And then the moles of the other compound will be on the, the top here. So I looked at my balanced equation. There are three moles of aluminum for every four moles of AL. Again, if I stop right now, my unit is moles of oxygen. It's not what I need. If you look, it says grams of oxygen. So to go from moles to grams, molar mass. Yes. How else did you do it? This one's pretty straightforward. It is combining your chapter 10 material with your stoichiometry mole ratio material. It's go it, it's this step. This is what makes it stoichiometry. Going between one compound and a different one. Questions? Yeah. Balanced equation. What's the hardest part? Practice will help. All right, let's try another one. Um, let's just stick with our same equation so we don't have to keep writing it down. Um, let's get our given in. Um, hmm. We have 125 grams of aluminum oxide and you need to determine how many liters of oxygen gas. So same balanced equation.
Oh, good call. I can fix that. Did you get it? Am I right? 125 times 3 times 22.4 equals 8,400 divided by 102 times 2 close. I do, yes. That's it. Braden, do you have a moment? Yeah, it's one moment. No, I don't know what Uh, so this was wrong. Gotcha. Other questions? On this? The mole ratio always comes from the balanced chemical equation. How about it? Okay, um, we're going to spend, uh, we're going to do some practice problems now until the end of class. Tomorrow is your at-home learning day and so is Monday. Tomorrow we will have practice problems. I will, um, I'll see you, I'll post a key, I guess, to make sure. There's no point in practicing them if you don't know if you're doing them right. Um, on Monday, I'm going to put a practice test in your Google Classroom. And then on Tuesday, we're going to try, we're going to take our test on stoichiometry. So mold a mole, mold a mass, mass to mole, mass to mass, and then mix is what I refer to these as. Um, that's just me picking any given and any unknown. As long as you have a balanced equation, you have the resources and tools and knowledge base to convert between anything. Okay. So the test is just going to be like, just like this, except for like the word problem? Yes. 